What's up, everybody? It's your favorite primate's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Kang Toys. Is it Thorilla? Something like that. It's the monkey pants, right? The monkey pants that we knew were coming, that we predicted were coming, that were eventually shown, revealed, and now are here. This is all known to me from Caleb. Good dude. Met me in person to, to give it to me, and he's gonna come over one day uh, when, the la when the last member is out and help with the transformations and stuff so that we can get through that review even quicker. But today we're gonna cover this. We're not gonna go over the foot too much, the kind of doll paw foot accessory slash figure because it's very close to the other one. We're just kind of gonna go through deco and articulation and stuff. We're not gonna go through the transformation, but we will go through his, but first we have to go through accessories. He comes with a gun, uh, painted with the same dark gun metal that you'll see throughout, as well as this silver highlight and some translucent red plastic and some red paint that's applied actually kind of hit or miss. But uh, it does come, it, it opens up as well. I'm not sure for what I'm guessing to combine with other weapons at some point. But for him, you just sort of have this tab here that can fold in, or you can use it to kind of maybe plug into something, or you can use this for him to hold. And he can hold it, uh, but it's not the greatest connection in the world, but he can hold it. You can also store the gun in these tabs on the side of his shoulder uh, in ape mode. It's not necessarily um, the easiest thing to get to, though, uh, but it is, it is possible. You also get this gun, which is intended for the wolf, uh, character that we'll go over briefly, but um, once again, it's the same as the other, I believe, and deco beautifully with the gun metal and then the gray slash silver and then the metallic red and a like kind of a wolfish type sculpt as well. So I, I kind of dig that thematically, and he'll hold that just fine. <clears throat> you also get this hammer weapon. Now I got some bad news for you, I'm afraid, but this is supposed to go on one side or the other. And there's a little tab for it to go on to, I believe. And then there's another piece that's the same that goes on the other side. But in his box, he only had one. I'm not sure if he got shortchanged on one. He probably told me and I just forgot. And it has this piece that plugs in, like on both sides, I believe. But as it stands, uh, I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm short of Mega Hammer. So just... You know, I guess kind of understand, and you know, I guess you could have them this way. No, I have to go this way. So all I have to work with is this, which is still decoed nicely. We have the metallic gold, we have the gunmetal, we have the metallic red, and uh, some translucent plastic, and it still looks good. This is where the handles are, and they have slots for his tabs and his palm. And he can hold that just fine, arguably better than his gun. He also comes with these two great pieces of plastic. Uh, nothing to really talk about independently by themselves. Uh, not painted or anything. They don't move except for this piece here. Uh, but they do have a function. I just can't show you right this second. He also comes with two of these things. <clears throat> I think they're mainly intended for combined mode. Uh, they are fully painted with the tampo stuff and everything that we're going to talk about when we get to the figure. The uh, This bit here, I think you could fold up. And then this bit here, you can unfurl. And uh, you can give him a, a extra bit of punch, if you will, and I'll show you how to do that. And you just take the tab and slot here, tab his forearm in, and then wrap this around the hand. It helps if you actually have it tabbed in properly. Um, and he has like a power glove of sorts. I hate this, but it's something you can do. You also get these two gray pieces. I'm guessing they're used as an adapter for combined mode or something. The instructions just show them, I think, plugging into the gun and like just leaving them hang there for the time being. There's like two different slots for you that you can utilize for that. Um, in addition to that, you get two other gray pieces that are used to kind of upgrade your, uh, what's his name, Rampage? Is it Rampage or Headstrong? Headstrong, right? No, Headstrong was the the bull. Headstrong was the rhino, but whoever the bull was. God, that's going to bother me now. Uh, Rampage was the cat, right? I don't know. Can't, can't call on it at the moment. Tantrum. Tantrum. Whew. Glad we got it. Anyway, um, there's an upgrade for Tantrum that plugs in like shoulder pieces and keeps them a little bit more secure. He's already installed those, so I don't have them here. And lastly, this is kind of an accessory... Uh, this is the other wolf that turns into a foot. Like I said, we covered the other one. Um, so we're not going to go too much into detail on this. I just wanted you to look at the deco, really, in the mo like the head 
sculpt and stuff might be a little different. I can't even remember, but I think it's so similar. Uh, the build is fair. Some joints are a little tight. That's kind of in par for the course with this set. Um, range of motion and stuff is fair. Um, the paint looks fantastic. The different shades of silvers along with the metallic red and the tampo paint. You know, the thigh joints in particular are a little touch and go. But, like, you know, you're going to be able to get this guy, you know, in pretty dynamic poses fa uh, fairly easy. <clears throat> so, you know, if you're in for this set and you kind of like these wolf characters, um, you know, this one's as good as the other one. As painted well as the other one and as articulated as the other one. I don't think there's a whole lot more to necessarily go over with this guy. And the transformation's the same. And let's talk about the figure. And there's actually some pretty interesting stuff going on with him. Uh, for one, uh, well, actually, not for one. We'll get to the one. However, the, the figure's fully painted, as most of them have been, you know, with the exception of some of the joints and such. But even with that, they make some deco choices that help with the presentation. Um, as far as the head goes, we'll get in tight on the head sculpt for Dennis. And... Unfortunately, not fully painted here with, uh, just because of the eyes. We, they're still using the light piping, which is silly and should not be used ever, in my opinion. But they use it. Uh, the head is on a ball peg. You get decent up, decent down, swivel, and confused monkey look. Uh, the face mask has some teeth sculpted in it. Uh, that's painted silver. And then we have the kind of like dark gunmetal paint on the helmet. <clears throat> These colors kind of repeat themselves throughout. I think I wish personally that they went with a metallic black as opposed to this gunmetal, but uh, I have to wait and see how I feel about that once it's combined. All right, for the shoulders, one of the smart choices. So the shoulders are connected to the chest as opposed to the shoulder. That's not smart. However, the articulation that they put into the shoulder, it hinges at the base here as a secondary hinge, and then there's even a ball peg up here, and then... There's this piece that moves, and if you want a more even exaggerated shoulder, you can have that piece out. So there's just an awful lot. Like if you want the shoulder like this and you want this to kind of cover down on the shoulder, you can do that. If you want it up more out, you can do that. So where they connected it is not necessarily my favorite, but, uh, but how they did is pretty cool. Now, for the shoulder joint itself... It is a ratcheted universal, and you can get almost, I mean, you can get all the way up. So, no almost about it, and then ratcheted all the way around. No uh, butterfly, but you do get a bicep swivel, and you do get a double-jointed elbow. They pretty much get you the full run. The, the elbow itself is a die-cast piece, and the metal helps with the aesthetic, and then we have the fully painted arms. Along with some silver and gold on the forearm and some tampo paint which is exciting as for the wrist they swivel thumb is on a base hinge that comes out to a ball peg that then has an additional knuckle um, at the end so fully articulated thumbs the fingers also on a base pen knuckle and then a secondary hinge with you know I guess ever so slight tight rider fingers but not really sorry you can't see any of that um but not really, you know, like I think you can get a pointing, you know, no problem. So I wouldn't hold it against them. Hold it, hand, get it, stop. All right. Then also not, 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 and lots, just meant to say lots of deco on the shoulder, little accents and stuff. Looks good. Moving on to the chest, gold, red, plus all of the kind of shades of silver that we've been talking about along with tampo paint with a waist swivel. We'll back out, brush them. All right, moving on to the hips. We have hip skirts. They'll get up and out of the way. Four universals in the hips. Not ratcheted, which I thought was a little weird, but you do get the full Van Damme. And just shy of the full Monty, but pretty close. Closer than you'll ever need. And a thigh swivel that's ratcheted. Double joint and knee that gets you 90 degrees, die cast joint. And then for the lower part of the figure, we have all of the deco that we've kind of talked about. Reds, golds, silvers, gunmetals, tampo paint uh, in black and silver. 
little stuff on the sides there. Looks good. And then we have the ankles. So we have an ankle tilt. Oh no. Whoop. Sorry, I thought we had an ankle tilt up, just a toe tilt and a rocker. And then the heel you can articulate for stability. Um, so that's a bit of a bummer, but not the biggest deal in the world. But yeah, I mean, all in all, for a like a big, beefy, bulky bot. Big, beefy, bulky bot. That was four Bs, mind you. It's a pretty good, solid effort um, and quite articulated. And uh, there's a look <clears throat> at the back. And I think that's supposed to go into there. There's a, uh, oh no, it lays flat the other way. Sorry. Yeesh. There's a look at the back. Cleans up pretty well, you know, in addition. So, you know, pretty nice. Size comparison wise, I don't really have the other ones currently, but there's a look at him with Masterpiece Trailbreaker and the Make Toys Jazz, which I happen to have sort of lying around. Um, so, I mean, very, very large. I actually have, I have Starlene too. Oh, he's about the same size as Trailbreaker, but um, so not not a whole lot of difference there. But hopefully, it should give you some sort of an idea of the size. I mean, he's a big figure. Let's get him transformed. So make your hands into a fist with the thumb on top, and you have to open up these two panels. Turn the thumb so that the or turn the hand so that the thumb goes in first. Uh, do I have it right? Kind of have to see what I'm doing. Let's bring this thumb out and tuck this thumb in. It's just a little hard to see what you're doing. Close that up and actually, I <laughs> know uh, we're not off to a good start, but you want to grab this tab of the hand. You want to encapsulate it with the forearm there, and then you can bring this back down and sort your hand out. Um, you then want to rotate your shoulder pad up. That'll just help you get to your shoulder here. And you want to spin the shoulder down to the bottom so that it sits more towards the bottom. There. Open. And we're going to tuck the hand in. Bring the monkey hand out wrap this part back around rotate the hand bring that panel back down and i think there then take the shoulder pad up spin our shoulder 180 drop it down orient it and then you might have to move this around a little bit or whatever but you can sort that out later we're gonna open up the chest spin the head 180 tuck the head in and we can close that back up on the back here. We're going to do the same thing in reverse. You basically invert this figure, flip the monkey head out, spin that around, and then bring that back and tab that in, which is giving me a little bit of grief, but I'll get it. Now, these shoulders, you got to unplug. They'll slide out at this joint and then spin them so that they plug in a little bit further, which will then line up with your shoulder pad as long as you slide that down as well. Double hinge it back and plug it in. Once again, just inverting it. You can flip out that extra piece in the shoulder pad that we talked about and wrap that down around it. Same for this side. We're just going to extend, bring back, swing in, slide forward, flip out, Tuck back, cover down. And now we're gonna do some more inverting. So we're gonna spin the waist 180. Then this piece will peg in to your pelvis piece. And then you want to rotate the thighs 180 as well. And then we're gonna open this up. We're going to combiner wars the leg in. And then we're going to close it up and then this piece comes down and covers down and then flip out the paws, the dog paws. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. 
uh, open Combiner Wars close double hinge down pause dog pause and I think you're supposed to tuck this heel in as best you can as well but it doesn't really matter then you want to bend at the knee drop that monkey low and on the back you take the kneecap bring it up and around which is super clever stuff um, to kind of finish off the look and uh, I mean that's basically it I'll clean it up we'll take a look at it and there he is now you can tuck these cannons away if you'd like uh, I'll just leave it out like this so you can make it decide. I kind of like the cannons out you know because then you can kind of get one monkey paw up and still have like be armed and stuff uh, but totally up to you totally up to you that being said, you still have the movement of the shoulder pads and stuff. You still have the same exact arm movement. You don't really lose any um, significant articulation there. Uh, for the legs, unfortunately, you do lose some unless you kind of fix the knee, which is not the biggest deal in the world, right? Because, like, it would be nice. Like, obviously, you can have him in this pose. In order to, like, get him standing up and beating on his chest, you gotta you would have to undo that part, which isn't isn't the biggest deal in the world, is it? And then you have a uh, toe tilt, and that one kind of toe moves out and in. Uh, I do really like the way they did this knee. There would have been nothing necessarily wrong with just keeping it like that. I think everybody would have forgiven it. Do you know what I mean? But they didn't. Uh, they, they created something to allow you to kind of cover it down. And now you can make the argument, I guess, that that looks a bit unfinished, but I don't think it looks as unfinished as that. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's... Uh, I think it's pretty thoughtful of them. I, I, I dig it quite a bit. I actually think that this beast mode really, really works and has a lot more kind of life to it uh, than the robot mode does. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think they did a good job, really. And let me show you what it looks like next to Tiger Tracks. And look real quick, we're just like kind of untransforming a couple things like with the knees on the front and back and covering down on the joints both ways, you know, and then you can kind of have him beating his chest if you'd like to, you know. Just, I mean, thoughtful stuff. I, like, it, it really, it, it works quite nicely, to be fair. Uh, but we got one more mode to go. So let's go there. And what we're going to do is undo the kind of ape head transformation. So in order to make it easier for us, we're just going to untab both sections, spin the ape head around, tuck it back in. We have to get access to that combiner port. We're going to flip that out. And then we're gonna make sure that's as squared up as possible. And we're gonna flip that back in. And we're gonna flip this back in. While we're in the process of putting things away, let's open this up. Make sure that you have your hand and a fist here. And then tuck your monkey fist in until it sits as tight in that cavity as you can. On this Make sure your guns are out. Mine were already out because I prefer it in the ape mode. Then that will snap close and that will cover down. We're going to do it one more again. So lift up here. Hand tucked in. Goes inside. Comes down. Folds in. And now we have to sort these shoulders out. So bring your whole shoulder assembly out and slide it back in. You can do that on both sides. Slide it back in. And then this, you want to fold out so that that little gray piece swings down. And then once that is set and that is out, the, the shoulder assembly that's connected to the chest will slide down and grab a hold of your arm assembly and kind of lock it in position and we're going to do the same on the other side so flip out flip down that little piece and then slide until it meets up with the whole armature of the arm open the chest 
and basically you want to align there's a bunch of moving pieces here just spin it until it all starts to kind of form a more solid shape you know what i mean and then you can get that out of the way same on this side we're going to pull it out so to speak rotate Oh boy, what have I done now? All right, wait, let me get this. This might help me. Oh boy. Easy does it. There. Get that out of the way. And then you have this bit. So now let's go ahead and straighten this so we can tuck this down and extend the legs. Tuck this down and extend the legs. This will at least allow us to get some grip on this bad boy, as you will see here shortly. So all of this you can kind of open up. And then there's this panel. You can flip these up too. It'll just help you. There's this panel here that opens up. And then there's another panel here that opens up. And then there's this whole circular section here that opens up. It's not the whole circle, but just that middle bit. Fold that up and down. I feel like it sat better. Um, and we're going to do that for both sides. up and down and then we're going to open up this section and this section <laughs> slide these two sections out as far as they will go and then the actual leg if you can see where that universal is connected on this disc will slide up underneath this section similar to uh fans projects chrome dome if you remember how they like slid that piece onto another piece uh just make sure that it is lined up properly there and now it's in the upper body as opposed to the lower body once again upper body as opposed to lower body at that point, you can close up your sections. On both sides. Take your middle pieces here, slide them both together, bring your front and back pieces there to once again encapsulate it uh pretty clever stuff now you need these to spin around this way so that they'll drop down and you have these panels here they'll flip up and cover down and then you have this one here which will come up but you're going to need to rotate some stuff around so this piece here you can get this little flap out of the way I think, which will help give you some space to manipulate this. This has to come up and over and sit right there. And then this one does the same thing, comes up and over and sits there. And then you kind of tuck all of this back. And uh, this sits up, covers down on the joint. That pegs in, the toe pegs in down here at the bottom, flip the monkey paw, and then this piece, oh, we gotta get this, we gotta get this combiner poured out. So, open up, where is the hinge here? There, that's the combiner port. I'm guessing it is going to be a nightmare, but Holy mackerel. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I might make him do that. It's just too tight. But that would flip out. And then you would close this back up. And then that piece would cover down. Uh, so I'll show you again on this side. We're going to bring the leg down. We're going to spin it. We're going to open some of these panels up. This one here. That one will come down and cover down on this joint. This one we need to open and just get out of the way. We need to get these sections up and over so that they plug in to the front there, both there and on the opposite side. And that is plastic pulling against plastic a bit. You can take this down, that will tab into the back once you flipped out your combiner port that I'm gonna let him do. And this folds out, but there is a tab at the front or the back of the knee, but it, uh, the slot is in the front of the foot and that tabs into the side and then just lay your monkey paws across, tuck the toe down. Whew, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of steps there. Um, and it's the only part that like feels like you're taking, that you're moving things kind of against their sort of natural will. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. Now, back to these. So these go on your hip joints. Slide them in. You're working a bit against this. Let's just move that out of the way for now. And then once they're on, they're ratcheted. But uh, it's a little challenging to get on. Uh, I'll try to show it again. Uh, it's just, uh, it's not the most user-friendly experience. I don't know why they didn't just ratchet them to begin with. There. There, that one went a little easier. And then, you know, you can put this back up. Then we got to get rid of the arms. So, just swing the arm down and then rotate in a way that's going to allow you to bring the elbows up. And then this tab on the forearm is going to go into that slot on the chest. And then you're doing the same thing on this side, just making sure it's lined up and pegging it in. And then the last thing that you need to do is just spin all this stuff down and bring these down. And that's it. There's the monkey pants. I will uh, clean it up. We'll take a look at it. So let me say this. It is impressive. A couple of little challenging spots that are a little irritating to deal with, but it is impressive at the end. Far more impressive than I would have expected given what it is. There's also some interesting stuff that goes on there. How this all is going to work, you know, is anybody's guess. Hopefully I'll be able to show you sooner than later. Uh, there it is next to Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. My biggest issue in robot mode is the light piping. Once again, unless it's under extreme light and then also from the back, it just doesn't do much for the life of the figure. Speaking of life of the figure, I don't know if it's because I have no connection to this character that they made up or because they had no connection to this character that they made up, but it doesn't do anything for me. Like it doesn't make me feel any kind of way about it. It's not like they brought some extra life to it that really worked for me in any meaningful way. You know, even like thematically, I feel like there's some stuff that's off, like the fangs and on the, on the mask like just doesn't make me think of a gorilla necessarily like I don't think a lot of visual components of a gorilla come through a lot in robot mode when they kind of had carte blanche to do whatever they wanted one of the things that would have helped I think both for the gorilla but also for Predaking is if this wasn't a metallic silver like a gunmetal but instead was a metallic black you know not unlike fans toys used for their trail breaker I think that that would have given you more of a sharp contrast here between the gold and silver but also made you feel a little bit more predaking y when they're Combine. Now I'm just guessing there because we have obviously we don't have them combined yet, but it's just something that stands out to me. There's a couple build concerns with joints being a little too tight here and there, but nothing to be alarmed about, just something worth mentioning. And I don't really think the translucent plastics do a whole lot for this figure. Once again, they are probably on the same sprue as the light piping piece. Had they just 86 that to begin with, we wouldn't be in this pickle. Nothing really to harp on on the transformation or the alt modes and such. I can't really judge the pants until we see how it actually works. There are a couple little 
frustrating moments going from ape to monkey pants, but nowhere near as frustrating as jive or that drift have been recently, so I will take it. But there are a couple of little places where you gotta move plastic against plastic and doesn't give you the kind of warm and fuzzies as it were. But that's about all I got. Positives wise, I think we just started two places, one of which is articulation. For a bot this size, he is very well articulated. Now I've missed some things about it even in the review. He has a wrist kind of hinge that goes back and forth that allows for outward movement. Um, and then I've cheated this joint here as like a butterfly joint. It's supposed to plug in there. I've cheated it, totally cheated it. The chest isn't really secured anymore to the bot and all sorts of stuff, but you can cheat it as well and even bring down like this shoulder joint a little bit to cover down on it and it hides perfectly. Just some really smart choices. On top of that, the paint. The paint continues to be fantastic. Not just on this guy, but on the Wolf as well. All the metallic cover, all the metallic colors, the tampo paints, etc. just add for a very striking look to an already impressive kind of build. And when I say build, I mean like bulk. I also think that the ape mode works really well and I quite enjoyed the transformation from robot to ape. And to be fair, I also enjoyed elements and sort of engineering ideas of ape to monkey pants. And I do think the monkey pants look pretty cohesive, to be honest. So it's a pretty solid piece overall. I have to recommend it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.